So um, let me just introduce density and pressure, since um, that's the quickest way to introduce it. Um, so most of you have seen density, but let me write it down. So this is how we, in physics, we define density. Density is, um, so if you have a particular material, like um, these um, standard masses, this is a 500 gram mass, this is a 200 gram mass. And it has some amount of volume. You can either calculate it as a you know, cylinder or whatever. Um, so it's some uh, object with some amount of mass, 500 grams, and some volume that you can imagine measuring. And density is defined for that object as mass per volume. Why would this be useful in trying to describe a fluid in this way? Why would it be useful to know the density? Um, actually, I guess I should, uh, no, let's finish this. Why would it be useful to know the density of a fluid? How does that help you describe the mechanics of, for example, this fluid element? Stephen? Yeah, it tells you the mass of this individual cube. So, you know, you are going to parameterize the, the fluid element so that you are describing in terms of this volume element. And when you try to describe the mechanics of it, you are going to need to know the actual mass of that element. And um, the way to describe the mass would be that small amount of mass for this element is the density times the volume element. Let me, um, I think we have mentioned it before, but in case we haven't, uh, reintroduce the symbol for density. This is the standard symbol for density. It's a Greek letter, and I want you to make sure everyone knew what this letter was. Um, everyone here knows the name of this letter? Rho, right? Anyone here speak Russian? Or no Syriac like alphabet? Okay, so that doesn't help. Um, because, you know, uh, to a lot of the Roman alphabet people, this looks like a P. But if you knew Cyrillic alphabet, then you do know this. Uh, actually, Russia, when you write it in Russian characters, this is the first letter you will see. This is the R kind of sound in that alphabet. And so, you know, this is the letter we call, it's the Greek letter called Rho, and it pronounces like R. It, you know, looks like P, but it pronounces like R. And I will tell you that my rho never looks like my P. So, you know, it's a lowercase thing, and this is my lowercase P. There's always a sharp corner here. My rho is always rounded, written with one stroke. So, um, it's a distinct letter. It's the standard letter we use for density. So, um, to express the amount of mass, in this little element here, we would say that's the density of fluid times the volume element. So this will give you an expression for density, and depending on the situation, you can do the rest of the calculation. Maybe you are simulating something like this, so, uh, but yeah. Um, we need to um, talk over one thing about uh, density. It's a, sort of a distinction between density and mass. It's especially useful when you have two different objects um, that's made up of the same material. This is made up of a steel, I think, or some kind of ferromagnetic stuff, because I'm pretty sure this magnet will stick to it. So yeah, it's some kind of ferromagnetic stuff. Let's say iron. So it's made up of iron. And when you look at mass of these two objects, they have different mass, right? 500 grams, 200 grams. Now, intuitively, do they have the same density? So I guess this is how you would think about it. So density is defined as mass per volume. So if for a given object, if you imagined having twice the material in volume, and if you can convince yourself then yes, I would have twice the material in mass, 
then it means the density of that object, whether you are talking about this density of this object or density of this object, they are the same. So what does your intuition tell you? So you already know that this is um, you know, two and a half times the mass of this. Does it look like about two and a half times the volume? Roughly, right? Yeah, and this is our common experience that if you are talking about mass, that's a property of an object. You get a different object, it'll have different mass altogether, even when they are made up of the same material. But density is something that people identified early on as it's the property of the material. It's the property of iron. It's a property of water. So, oh, I forgot to get water cup. So, if you have, um, if you get some amount of water, so let me try to get 500 milliliters of water. So, if I get 500 milliliters of water, then the water has a certain amount of mass. That's going to be related to how much volume, 500 milliliters, there is. So, um, you know, if I get got twice as much water, uh, one liter of water, then it would have double the mass. So, you know, chemists from early on started measuring this density because they realized that different substances have different densities, usually. And for a given substance, um, under a range of different uh, conditions, the density doesn't really change. So, um, like, so density of the ion, is it greater than density of water? Or is it less? Greater? How do you know it's greater? Kind of, you have this experience, right? You put it in water and it sinks. Well, I don't want to break anything. Um, <laughs> all right, if I break the beaker, then I break the beaker, okay. Um, you know, you put it in water and it sinks. Or uh, density of wood, is it smaller or greater than water? Like, you know it's smaller, right? And you know, a lot of times people say colloquially that wood is lighter than water. But when you say that, it's sort of like, okay, lighter than how much water? It is lighter than, it is heavier than a drop of water. But if you are comparing this to the same volume of water, then it is lighter. And one of the things that you know that from is that it floats on water. And we'll talk about how that relates to the density actually being small. But, um, so this is a, a density of a material property that uh, you can actually build a table of. So, you know, we wouldn't bother making a table of um, masses because, you know, sh you shave off a little bit of material, the mass just changes entirely. But with the density, you shave off a little bit of material, density doesn't change because it's the property of iron. So let me pull this up before it starts rusting. Um, so in your textbook, you will actually find the table of densities. And there are some numbers that are actually useful to know. And I want to talk about density of one substance in particular, and that's uh, water. Anybody here know density of water? Um, you might tell me the version that you heard in chemistry class. Because when I hear 1,000, I think that's the one you saw in the tech physics textbook, which is great, but it doesn't um, tell the story I want to tell. What's the version you heard for the density of water um, in your chemistry class or some really convenient number that you might remember? One? Maggie, what are you saying, one? Yeah, so uh, one is the correct number in the correct unit. So it, what is it um, in units of? It is one what? Gram. Gram per cubic centimeter, right? So this is density of water. It's uh, um, almost suspiciously uh, convenient. Anybody here know why density of, you know, why it's so uh, suspiciously convenient? This is a more of a science a history trivia. It doesn't really relate to anything today, but um, it's, you know, it's a story that if you remember, it'll help you memorize what the density of water is. So it'll help you anchor some values of, typical values of density. 
No one here knows the science history? Like why density of water came to be exactly or almost exactly one gram per cubic centimeter? Asia? No? Yeah, it's by definition. This is how we originally, hundreds, hundreds of years ago, hundreds of years ago, this is how we defined the gram. Gram used to be defined by property of water. So the way scientists, I guess it might be alchemists or chemists, whichever, <laughs> um, people doing science then defined uh, the unit of gram, which is unit of mass, by the property of water. They were super careful with it, you know, they specified the standard conditions, like you know, water at one atmospheric pressure and some temperature, because they discovered that when you change the temperature, the density of water changes. Um, so with, with all those caveats, this is how gram is defined. Gram is defined so that it's amount of mass. When you have one cubic centimeter of um, water, People had defined the centimeter earlier, so they knew how to measure cubic centimeter. Or if you remember your volume unit, one cubic centimeter is also one milliliter. So you might have some beaker that can actually measure out milliliters. And um, so they knew if you measured out 500 milliliters, like this is how you would define 500 grams. So, I mean, we don't define grams that way anymore. Uh, we have a, a much more, because you know, the measurement technology um, improved a lot. We can measure masses in like one part in a billion. And at some point, uh, defining gram by property of water becomes limited by um, the property of water itself, as in how pure can you get it? So we stopped defining gram by water. But and today, gram is actually kilogram. It's defined by a standard kilogram that lives in France, never sees light of the day. Um, it, copies are made of it to get shipped to elsewhere. That's the SI kilogram. And in the very near future, they are actually going to change the definition of kilogram again to base it on something called the Planck's constant that's uh, important in modern physics. Um, so you know that's how we are doing it today, but this is the history. And whenever we redefine uh, this unit, we always redefine it in a way that we don't have to change the general idea of how much one gram is. So if with the current definition of gram, it still works out that density of water is almost very literally one gram per cubic centimeter. <laughs>